If you ever ask AI agents like Cursor or Clawco to build a beautiful user interface with Shazian, and you probably end up with a mess of broken components, styling issues, and things just don't work as expected, then you're in the right place. The problem is that most AI agents lack the right context to build UIs correctly. So that's why in this video, I'm going to show you how to fix that. And we're going to walk through a complete powerful workflow that uses the Shastian UI MC server to give our coding agents the right context they need to succeed. And I will show you how to connect it with your coding IDEs, set up some simple but critical rules and generate a full implementation plan. Then we will watch as the AI builds a fully functional Next.js applications with a beautiful UI automatically with one single prompt. And by the end of this, you will have a repeatable blueprint for building any professional web apps with amazing UI in a fraction of time. So with that being said, if you're interested, Let's dive in. So to get started here, you can see we have our Shastian UI MCP server. So if we were to scroll down, you can see that it tells you exactly how to install it. And basically we have two options. So one is that we can do it without the token from our GitHub API, which limited to 60 API requests per hour. But if we do have the token, we can get up to 5,000 requests per hour. So here to get our API key, we're just gonna go to github.com settings slash tokens. And here we can just generate a new token here. And here we're just gonna give it a name for the token name and then scroll to the bottom, generate the token. All right, so once we have the token, Token, what we can do is we're going to set this environment variable for the GitHub personal access token. So here I basically already set this and I have already run this command and you can see that we have our chat C and MCP server running. And if we were to scroll down a bit, you can see that we also have to do our editor integration. So let's say we're using cursor. There is also a cursor integration here, but let's say if you're using VS code, you can follow this guide right here. And basically what we can do is just to add this MCP server onto our MCP server list, attach our token there as well. All right, so here, since I'm using a AI coding editor, all I had to do, just click on the gear sign here. It's going to show the MCP server right here. So here you can see for MCP servers, I have the chat CN UI MCP server added. So simply I just click on edit here and I can be able to add our MCP server for Shastian along with the GitHub API key. Now here you can see these are a couple usage examples that we can use. Now just to test if it's actually able to call the MCP server, we're just gonna copy this prompt. So here I'm just going to ask the coding agent here to perform this. All right, so here you can see it's gonna request to call this MCP server for the Git component function. So here we're just gonna run this and here you can see it give us a source code for Shastian UI button components which means that the current MCP server is working. But it feels like it's getting to a point where the UI here is a bit hard to see for this one. So I'm just gonna change it to a different themes here for using the Abacus Lite. And here you can see it much better. But let's continue the video from here. All right, so once we test our MCP server working, now let's take a look at what are some available tools that we can call. So here you can see these are available tools for this MCP server. For example, we can get components and also get the components usage examples, list all the components, get the component metadata for the dependencies and info. And here we all can also be able to get the blocks tool. And if you were to look at the blocks for Shastian, you can see that these are all the blocks and each block here contains multiple Shastian components. It could be things like sidebars, charts, data table and so on. Anyways, so currently I have this application running and it's currently running on local 3000. So currently this is our Next.js React application. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start to build a Kanban board like this using the Shastian MCP server agents. Now to do so, first thing first, what we need to do is we always want to set the rules for this. Now every AI coding editors has the rule section. So we're just gonna create the rule for the AI agent here. Now in terms of the rules, we're gonna always set the rule for whenever we wanna modify or create our user interface, we always want to use the Shastian MCP server whenever possible. So here we're just going to click on create rules and I'm just going to name it shastian.md and simply we can just define our rule content here. All right, so here you can see this is what I put for the .mdc file and here you can see when a task require building or modifying a user interface, we always want to use tools available in the Shastian UI MCP server. And here you can see these are the planning rules. So when planning a UI or using Shastian, Make sure to always use the list components or list block components to see all the available assets in the MCU servers. So here we always want to analyze the user requests, and also map the required UI elements available, and also prioritize to use the block first for the chat CN. And then there's also the implementation rule. So whenever we want to implement the UI, we always want to get the demo first. So we want to call the demo to uh, understand what components being used, what's required. And also we want to retrieve the code, single components, or the entire block, right? 
and then we want to implement it correctly. So pretty much very generic rules that we set for chassis and how we use it, how we should use it to build our user interface. So once we satisfy with this, then the next task to do is here you can see on the right. So first thing first, what we want to do is to create a UX structure plan for the web application we want to build. Now pretty much we want to build a Kanban board for like a YouTube sponsorship workflow. So maybe we're start to making the video, we're finished the video or it's in review something like that, right? Like a Kanban board for project tracking, right? Now the final output should be in a markdown file. And basically I give it a prompt on what are the things that we want to build. And you can see that I go ahead and basically create this UX structure plan, which we can always refer to this .md file whenever we want to build things, right? So if you, here you can see, this is the navigation flow, the login page. And here we also have our dashboard page. Then if we were to scroll down, you can see the dashboard, we have our Kanban board containers, and then we also have the future to add new deals or add new uh, sponsorship deals or so on, right? So we can keep track it here, which is really cool. So then once we have our structure plan, what we're gonna do is we're going to ask the coding agent here to design the implementation plan. So basically you can see that this is the UX structure plan, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reference this. So please look at this file and make a UI implementation using chassis and UI as what components will be used in the UI structure and where, and also write the name of those appropriate components to be used, not the code. So here you can see it's going to, to analyze the UX structure plan, identify the appropriate components for each section on this application. So then once it's done, it's going to create a file called chassis and UI component mapping. This is what it looks like. So you can see that for each page, for each components, it tells you exactly what are the components that's, that's going to be used for building that. And once we satisfy with this, we can then accept all and this will create the file. And if you were to scroll all the way down, it also gives you the additional chassis components needed, for things like the icons, the layout components, the utility components. All right, so very, very cool. So it gives a lot of context on what's gonna build. Now, once we satisfy with this, what we can do now is we can be able to reference this. So I'm just gonna slide this over here to make it much more easier to read. And just to make it easier, I'm just gonna change this to be implementation plan. And here I'm just going to reference this. And here we're just gonna say implement what we have inside of our implementation plan inside of our campaign application here. And here we're just gonna send this request and here it's going to start building. All right, so now you can see it's complete the implementation. And here you can see it gives you a list of summary on what are the things that it did. So here like login page, the dashboards, and then for the Kanban board, there's six there's a total of nine workflows. So now you can see the application is live, which we can be able to view here. But before we do so, we wanna make sure to accept all the changes here. Once we accept all the changes, if we were to navigate to the dashboard page, so here's what it looks like, which is not bad. Here you can see we have our nav bar. It even gave us a logo and a brand name for this product. So here you can see we have our stats and also things like prospecting, the initial contact. Uh, so things like different stages for the Kanban board. And just to make sure that the basic features are working in a Kanban board, if I were to drag this card to the next column, you can see that it works. And if I were to go from initial contact to negotiating phase, uh, I can do that as well. And finally, if I were to send the contract, I can drag it over to the next column. Okay, so if I were to delete this car, for example, you can see it prompt us to delete. If we want to delete it, we're gonna say yes. And here you can see it's deleted it. Now, before we get to the next part, let's give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, ByRover. ByRover has built a central memory layer for modern dev teams using coding agents. Now, chances are you have been in this situation. You're coding with an AI IDE like cursor or clock code, and you have spent all your time carefully describing your project context, but the next day, when you start a new session, all of the knowledge is gone. And you have to waste time explaining everything from scratch, or maybe you're working with your team, but all the valuable lessons from past interactions, the best practices, the bug fixes are all siloed. They aren't shared across the team, so your colleagues' agents keeps making the same mistake over and over again. And you know that basic rule files like claw.md file just aren't enough for the massive code base. Or maybe you start in cursor, switch over to Gemini CLI, or any other agents and none of that context carry over. But Byte over here solves all that. What if your AI agents can actually remember all that context permanently? With Byte over, your project knowledge is saved. Everything from high level programming concepts to specific business logics, past interactions, bug fixes, even the model's own reasoning steps. This gives your agents maximum context, enabling smarter, more accurate code as your project grows. You can think of it as a unified memory layer shared across all your favorite coding IDEs like Cursor, Claw Code, VS Code, and more. So it scales right alongside your code base. For all my fellow open source fans, Byrover just launched Cypher, an open source memory layer that you can plug directly into your IDE with zero configuration. Both of these tools are designed to make your coding agents more intelligent 
and genuinely useful. It's completely free to get started, so to check out the link in the description to try it out. Awesome, so that's it for this video. And if you do want to try this MCP server, I will link it in the description below for the Shastian UI MCP server. And if you also want to get the rules that I set for the Shastian MCP server for AI coding IDEs, you can download these from our Discord server in our CodeShare channel. There you can be able to copy the rules and be able to set it in your coding IDEs after you have your Shastian MCP server installed. So pretty much that's it for this video. If you do found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.